This is Rebel Therapist, a podcast for entrepreneurs who are trained as therapists and who want to level up their businesses, make a bigger impact, feel fulfilled, and be very well paid. I'm your host, Annie Schusler. So I got this email last week, and it was the worst email I've gotten in a while. I'm going to share it with you, and I'm going to share my internal reactions and the decisions I made after. Now, this email really isn't that bad. I'm sharing it because I know a lot of you are really afraid of getting an email like this one, and I'm hoping that hearing about my experience is going to help you feel less afraid of that. And I'm hoping that you feeling less afraid of getting an email like this is going to help you make aligned decisions in your business. And I'll explain all of that in just a little bit. So you can listen to this episode now. And then if you get an email like this one, maybe you'll listen to it again. So the email I received was actually a response to one of my sales emails promoting Create Your Program. And that's the high touch program I run three times a year. So this email I received said, way too many emails with not much info, blocking your email and please remove me from your wait list. Feels like clickbait. So I said, ouch, out loud. And then my partner looked over at what I was reading and said, that's not nice. And I paused for a moment and I had this feeling of, am I a fraudster? Am I a villain? Am I a jerk who never provides value? Am I spamming this person? And does this person hate me? And then I paused and I said to my partner, you know what? No, it's okay. She's right to tell me she's annoyed. And I did also feel a little annoyed with the email sender. I thought, you know, she could have just unsubscribed. There's a link in every single email to unsubscribe. So why didn't she just do that? Why be like this? And I also wished I could write back to her and explain and also say, I'm sorry you didn't get value and maybe you should check out this or that free resource that I provide. But I couldn't do any of that because she's telling me not to contact her. But you know what? I realized she might not know that unsubscribing actually works. And she's totally within her rights to tell me her experience and set a digital boundary. She was clear and did not call me names or behave abusively. She was letting me know that she's withdrawn her consent to be emailed by me. And I very much want people to be able to withdraw their consent. So as she asked, I just went right into my email platform and I deleted her from it. And then while I was there, I looked into what emails we had sent her so I could try to understand a little more about her experience. And I could see that she had signed up for a free workshop through an ad that I run on Instagram. And then she'd gotten follow-up emails reminding her to watch that free training before it expires. And then she had gotten some sales emails about my program. So it's likely that she didn't actually watch the training, which is totally understandable. I've done that too. I've signed up for a free workshop or a class and then not hit play on it. And then she opted in to be on the wait list for Create Your Program. So since she signed up for the free workshop and then the wait list right during a launch of Create Your Program, she got probably the maximum amount of emails that someone could ever get from me, like two times a day for a couple of days. So I took a step back and I looked at that and I thought, is there anything I want to change about this flow going forward? And in this case, I didn't really want to change much. I want people who are new to my list to have a chance to jump in on the interest list. It's called a wait list, but it's really an interest list for Create Your Program. And a lot of times people find me right when they're looking for a program like mine. And it's really important that they can sign up right away if that's what they're looking for. I only run it three times a year right now. So I don't want people to have to wait months to get a chance to jump in if they're ready for it now. So I didn't make any big changes, but I did make one change. I already have an opt-out email that I send every time I'm launching to my list. It basically says, I'm going to be promoting my program for a couple of weeks with more frequent emails. And if you want to stay on my list, but you don't want to hear about Create Your Program this round, just click here and it'll be quiet for a couple of weeks. This was something I learned from Kelly Deals and I always hat tip to her in that email. So the change I made is a pretty small one. I went ahead and added a quick opt-out option to 
all of the sales emails, not just that one. So if someone on my list opens any sales email before the final day of enrollment, they're going to have a chance to opt out of receiving more sales emails in that round. Now, if that didn't make sense to you, don't worry about it. I just basically gave people a way to get less emails from me if that's what they want. So I actually feel pretty good about how that whole process went. When I take a step back, I know that for me, it's tempting to either collapse into shame when I get an email like that, or to get mad at the person who criticized me. And I felt really good noticing that I didn't really do either of those things. I felt twinges of both of those things, a little bit of shame, a little bit of anger, but then I quickly found a more grounded spot. So on the shame side, I felt like, ugh, this is upsetting. But also, I know I'm a good person who is striving to do good work and to give value. So I don't really need to collapse into shame. And... I felt tempted to be mad at the person who sent the email, but also I know she's standing up for herself as best as she can, and I think that's exactly what people should do. So I don't really need to be mad at her. So when I teach people about email marketing and they create a practice of emailing their list regularly, that means the people who have opted in to hear from them, a lot of times people talk about feeling terrified of getting a response like the one that I got. Like hearing from someone, you're sending too many emails, or this is annoying, or the dreaded, this is clickbait. And here's the thing, you might get a response like that at some point, but probably not very much. Like this is the worst email I had gotten in quite a while, like over a year. So the people I work with and the people who listen to this podcast are here to do important work. They're not just here to make money. They want to make good money and they're really invested in creating meaningful work that helps people. And the people I work with are critical of any kind of tactics that are manipulative. The people who want to connect with Rebel Therapist love consent. (laughs) So if that's you, which I bet it is, the good news is you're probably going to enjoy a lot of feedback letting you know that your work is helpful. And I know that being helpful is important to you. When our team member, Taitlin, saw that complaint email, she said, you know, this is the first time in the year I've worked here that I've seen an email like that. And that was such a good perspective for me. I also noticed that on that same day that I got that complaining email, I got an email thanking me for the valuable free content that I've been providing and naming a specific takeaway that they got from it. So I say that to point out, if you're increasing how much you're communicating with your email list, or you're getting more frequent or more bold with your messaging, and you're fearing some kind of pushback, I want to tell you that it's going to be okay. You're going to be able to consider feedback, take useful stuff from it if it's there, and leave the rest, and keep doing your important work. Now, before I close this topic, I do need to tell you where this kind of thinking doesn't apply. I've gotten really mean and abusive comments sometimes on social media, like someone recently sharing that I am hideous. And of course, that feels bad, but that kind of comment is so clearly not something to consider or let in. That's coming from a person who's trying to harm a stranger by insulting that stranger's appearance. So I inherently don't believe that that's a good thing for me to be paying attention to or for you to be paying attention to. And when people are dehumanizing in their communication with you, I really don't suggest that you consider their feedback. Screw that. That is really not feedback. And now if you want to get on the interest list for Create Your Program, that's the very interest list that this person requested being removed from, please head over to rebeltherapist.me slash create. In Create Your Program, I work with you and a small group of ethical therapists and healers to create your signature programs and start working and making money in new ways. So to get on that interest list, you're going to head over to rebeltherapist.me slash create. And if you're finding this podcast supportive, there are a couple of things I want to ask you to please do. Number one, subscribe or follow wherever you're listening to this. And number two, give us a rating. The more five-star ratings we have, the more the place where you're listening to this show is going to share it with other people. We have 140 ratings on Apple Podcasts at the moment when I'm recording this, 
And if you would take a second and give us another five-star rating, that would mean so much. It would really help us. I appreciate you so much. And I'll be back next time. I want to thank Ames Palms for editing this podcast. If you found this episode supportive, please do a couple of things. Share it with your favorite therapist or healer. That is absolutely the most important way we reach more people. And if you haven't already, please hit follow and give us five stars. That is so helpful to this podcast. And thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next time.